Hi everybody, welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel. We are here for your instant reaction for that absolutely atrocious display against Southampton, which is saw Southampton take a top spot of the Premier League. Matty, he's joining me tonight. Um, you did get it right with your prediction in your starting 11, mate. First time this season. Over the moon, Over the moon with that. I wish you hadn't got that right. <laughs> Jeff, just Jeff Hendrick is the slowest footballer I've ever seen in my life. Yes. No, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not blaming him for that game. Before yeah, yeah, yeah. Piling in, but Jesus, yeah. mate. Yeah, I mean, at the, end, at the end of the day, uh, I said that in in that prediction. I said that the only reason he'll play is it seems that Steve Bruce has a lot of faith in him. Uh, mm. We've only started seeing him play in that central midfield role uh, since he's came in off the right in this new three-the-back system. The first time we played it, he seemed like he was the only central midfielder. He's been joined by players out of position, etc., etc. But... Yeah, tonight, um, whether he's slow or what, uh, he just seems very, very uncomfortable under a press and his, his first time passing does not come off. And yeah, we, we saw it subsequently with Steve Bruce replacing him later in the game. It took him mm. a while. He finally did it. He brought Matty on. Obviously, we know that didn't really make much of a difference. But yes, uh, I feel like Isaac Hayden was a bit of a miss tonight. Like. So I've just I've just listened to Bruce's uh, conference, well not conference, but his interview after the match day. Uh, I'm not sure if you picked it up, mate, but they said that obviously Southampton are known for the high pressing. We mentioned this before in the WhatsApp group before the, the ball was kicked, and Bruce said yes, we're working on it for the last two days. I'm not sure what went wrong, but every time we got that ball in defence, if you know a team is a high pressing team, you get rid of the ball. Every single one of our players tonight wanted to take as much time as possible trying to do turns on the ball, trying to do crouch turn, trying to do kick-ups, trying to shag the ball at one point, mate. <laughs> I, I just... What, what, what was happening, mate? If they've been working on that for the last 48 hours, there has yeah. to be massive, massive investigations of what's happening on that <laughs> field. Well... Um, I mean, Alan Smith is a bit of a touch-and-go commentator for me, um, but he did make a good point during the match and said that when you compare the two presses, because I feel like we, we try to counteract Southampton with our own press, and I think Southampton uh, just know, their other players know their jobs, they know when to press and who's going to press certain players on the pitch, whereas our uh, press was very much a Sunder League press. It was just, go on, go on, you could hear Find Bruce, the ball. You go, you go, you go. Get out, get out. Go, 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 go. Um, I just felt like they were just more, much more organised than mm. our press was. Um, I want to say us press the ball. It's nice to see us press the ball sometimes, but at the same time, if it's not organised, you leave holes. And I think that uh, other than a few last-ditch tackles and a few uh, very good saves by Carl Darlow, it could have been a number of goals to nil tonight. Yeah, I think you've hit the nil there, mate. Their press is, is pressing a player. Our press looked like as many defenders on the field that you could find chasing the ball. Yep. It, it looked like toddlers for ball <laughs> school at some points. There was later in the second half where, where the ball was going out on the right-hand side. And I think every single one of our players on the pitch was like a magnet to that ball. They were just all running towards the ball. And I don't know, going from, because we did see it against Evan. We did press well against Evan. Yeah. Then you go in that game, and it looks like it looks like you've just turned up, yeah. And and, and once again, not done your, your your background checks on the team that you're about to play. And of course, the first goal, Almiron, he's dicking about with the ball, but I think he's dicking about with the ball because he doesn't have many other options. He does well, try and pass it back, but he gets tackled as he's trying to pass it I back. Think, I think there's an option there to lay it back to. I think it's one of the centre halves. I think it's Fernandez. He could have mm. laid it back to him but punted up the field. At the end of the day, the uh, if. He, he, he could have, at first he didn't have options that's why he dwelt on the ball he could have knocked it back to Fernandez. Uh, we've talked about this previously um, he does like to try and hold on to it to try and formulate a break in this new yeah. role he's on you know he did it against Everton he formulated that break that led to the same maximum chance and I'm all for him doing that but when he's his, his face is towards the opposition goal and not when his back is to it so he should have known to just get rid of that, to put mm. it in touch, you know. Um, it, it was a real shame. And then we saw, I don't know what uh, 
Sean Longstaff was doing for that second goal. You know, he's dwell he's dwelt on it. He's looked for that out pass, but at the end of the day, just get rid of it. I know we're chasing the game. I know you want to keep the ball, but he's went to kick it. And I think it's just a mistake. He's went to kick the ball and it's, it's puts one over the top of the ball. And I think and he, he tries to drag the ball back, mate. Because yeah, he's yeah. left foot, he tries good. to drag it back and he's nowhere near the ball. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's a last ditch attempt to try and make up for for the previous era and. I don't know. Like like I said, mate, it's just like there's nothing there tonight. It was yeah. a very flat performance for ourselves. Um, Carl Dolo is probably the only player that comes out with that with a little bit of, of credibility from it. Yeah. Um, th- there was a few shots on his goal. Fantastic save. And I think uh, Rob Elliott, ex-goalkeeper of Newcastle United, <laughs> put a tweet out saying uh, that that saved the season. But then going down to the half, Julian had a fantastic header. Great header. Goal, goalkeeper. Fantastic save once again. That was our only shot on target, I think, mate. Yeah, yeah. well, I think uh, Sean Longstaff had a header on target in the first really? half. Uh, yeah, put straight at, at their keeper. You're right, mate, yeah. But but, but you're right. Um, yeah, great, great save by Alex McCarthy. Uh, hats off to him, but at that point, the game's already won. Mm. Carl Darlow, again, he, you know, I've said it in my predictions for the start of 11. It's a, he's a no-brainer to stay in that, in that place. He, he's, he's done so much this season so far, but I sort of think that there was a sort of epitomised section of the game where uh, a corner comes in, uh, he, he is reaching for, for that cross, he misses it completely. If, 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 if I think it was Bednarek could have just put his header on target, they would have definitely scored from that error. The ball comes out of the edge of the box, Romeo blasts it and he just gets fingertips on it and puts it on the bar and it's a fantastic save yeah. um, before that he'd already made a great save against Shea Adams but then two seconds later he's ended up picking the ball out of the back of his net mm. from, from Shea Adams um, we owe a lot to Carl Dallo this season I know we could talk all night until we're blue in the face about whether Dubravka comes back in for me as much as Carl Dallo's a great shot stopper I think he just the other parts of his goalkeeping game aren't great but Again, I'm not going to have a goal, Carl Dalot tonight because, again, like you've said, he deserves a bit of credit from stopping it from being mm. a bit embarrassing. But there was a shot really late on in the game, mate, and I think it might be red on the top of my head. Um, he takes a shot, and, and I'm thinking, what's Dalot on there? He saves it, but yeah. look, the ball just pings off in, in some random direction. I'm thinking, what's he done there? Why is he not collected that? But Sky has to show the replay back, and the ball curves. And Dollar does really well to adjust himself just yeah. to knock that ball away. Um, I, I, of course, from his set pieces, he doesn't look fantastic. He does flap out the balls uh, uh, quite a lot. But, the, like I said, he's the only player that, that comes out with that game with any credibility for me. Like, um, um, Fernandez is that- probably as well, I would say. Maybe a little bit, yeah. Um, but not going to call keeping too much, but I think Carl Darlow is the epitome of a great shot stopper. A lot of people will say... Um, what is a goalkeeper other than, than a good shot stopper? That's what they're there to do. There's a lot more to being a goalkeeper. Mm. You know, your distribution, your 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 uh, positioning, at set pieces and and at shots, blah 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 blah. And Carl Dallo is a great great shot stopper for me. But then he shows his sort of his feelings in other parts of his game. But again, mm. again, I'm not. This isn't me having a goal, Carl Dallo. I'm just saying he's been great so far this season. However, there is certain parts where he highlights. Sort mm. of the, the fails in his, in his game. But I think if we're going to give a man of the match to the Newcastle player today, it would probably be Dolo. Hands yeah, down. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, another player that I want to talk about, say Maxon. Mm-hmm. It's the third game which we've saw him in that second strike at number 10 role. I don't even know what to call it. Yeah. It's another game where he's had zero impact whatsoever. Yep. He's gone from a player who we were excited about playing on that left hand side, running at defenders. To a player who barely touches the ball now. Again, another that needs to change. Yeah, another thing I mentioned um, in, in in the pre one of my previous videos. Um, love Alan Saint Maximin. Um, I saw a couple of comments on Twitter tonight saying, "As all, oh, he reminds me of another Frenchman who have bad, terrible games and then great games." You know, Pat and Ben Arthur comparison. But for me, Alan Saint Maximin, when he's a wide player, there's not many better. You know, if, 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 if a terrifying fullbacks, he's so great with the ball at his feet. But when he's having to seek that ball out with his back to goal, coming deep, you know, we've seen a couple of instances where he can turn, Cruyff turn, and knock it past a couple of players. He is. 
capable of that, but you can't expect him to do that every time. He's much better getting the ball played in front of him and running at players, having players retreat with their back to goal, and um, that's not going to happen with him playing as his second striker. Mm-hmm. But th- this is the shortcomings of this formation. It has got its, its sort of advantages with you know keeping us defensively solid, even though we've conceded two goals tonight through mistakes um, with the three uh, but the three and a half sort of make you solid but you, you can't play St Maximin in one of those wide fullback roles and you can't play him as one of the central midfielders so you're going to have to play him as like a second striker and for me that just doesn't work and that's where the problem lies for me yeah so so you said they were defensively solid and I think we'll have looked at at times but do you know how many shots we've had at yes, our goal yes, so far yes. this season yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 I don't know now. Um, I know that halfway through the second half, we had us was 123, 124, 129, 129. Okay, well there you go. And I think it's going to be in the 130s. Um, after the game finished. Um, yeah, I appreciate that, mate. And I think that's what Bruce has tried to do with changing this formation, but. I think that tells us a lot of things. The fact that he's changed the formation. Yes, we're not conceding that many shots on target. I think I said that when comparing the Wolves game to the Man United game. It wasn't exactly great. It was Man United had 28 shots and Wolves only had 14. Mm. But with the shots on target uh, that were a bit less. But yeah, again, we are conceding so many shots and relying so much on our defenders blocking them and more so Carl Darlow saving them. Yeah, no, you're right, mate. We'll, We'll wrap this up. Because we've been going a little while there. Yeah. Um, but that's not the best result that you want going into an international break. Probably mm-hmm. the worst performance you could imagine going into that break. Um, where do we go from here? Well, for me, um, it, it is the great unknown. I think one thing that's massively, massively important is we assess the injuries of, uh, well, not just uh, Fraser not being on the bench and having a half Wilson injury. As well now, it's Wilson, and that's what I was going to get to. You know, he comes off injured, and that worries me. I was, he was feeling his hamstring. I pray to God, you know, I'm, you know, hamstring injuries can be funny. They can either be tears or strains or just little bruises, and and I hope that it's just the the he went straight down the, the tunnel as well straight down the tunnel when you got taken off. I know, mate, but I mean, uh, this is me trying to be optimistic, but, you know, any injury, you go straight down the tunnel. Uh, I'd hope that he, he's going to be okay and that over these next two weeks, he's going to be all right because we've realised how important it is for us to have a, a striker with that mentality of being a striker. Hence, yeah. scoring six goals. I know some of them have been penalties, but six goals in seven games. He's so important in Newcastle, and I hope he's okay. So where we go from here, I'm not too sure, um, but hopefully that doesn't affect us too much. But Steve Bruce has to look at his, for me, the midfield a lot. I, I said in, in, in the video about, you know, Hendrick's going to stay because he has faith in him. It would have been unfair to not have Longstaff and Almiron play because they did play well against Everton. Mm. But I think that game's shown that it's not going to work every the uh, weekend so hopefully he has another trick up his, up his sleeve if he has any tricks up his sleeve yeah no you're right um like like i just said they made that international break coming up it, it's not great great for that performance but it probably is great because wilson goes off the field with an injury that probably works in our favor so you've got to look at the positive that's probably the only positive i can take <laughs> from the game that and probably dollo saves yeah um but other than that mate um let, let's let's end it um, <laughs> there's, there's not much joy from this one but what can you expect um, like yeah. I said Southampton go top of the league they probably deserve it very much overall, so overall they've been great this season do I think they'll finish there no no but but they could be they could be one of those outside teams who you know challenge for those European spots they've, 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 they've pulled their fingers out under there's always one isn't there mate there's always yeah, one exactly it might be South uh, and if there's one thing I would say to people you know is um, you know I'm a stickler for it uh, Newcastle ruining my weekend but we've got it out the way on a Friday night we've got a Saturday and Sunday ahead of us try and enjoy whatever football you're going to watch this weekend try and enjoy everything else in this crazy world we're living in right now and just don't let Newcastle we- ruin your weekend as hard as it is not to happen I have it happen to me all the time just don't let it happen it's Friday night just kick on this weekend in the world we're living in just enjoy your weekend you know yeah, I think I think this might be one of the first weekends where Callum Wilson hasn't done his favours in the fantasy league <laughs> <laughs> so that's ruined me weekend even more so, <laughs> Fuck, I've, I've, we're, we're Saturday I, and Sunday ahead of us wake up tomorrow let's forget about I'm, I'm pinning all hopes on Harry Kane this weekend <laughs> all hopes on Harry Kane right Thanks for joining us, mate, and I'll see you next time. Good night, lads. Good night. We're shite, you know.